Hey everybody, Josh from Josh Kid Films. Thanks so much for visiting my YouTube channel. One of the things that I really love about filmmaking and movies in general is movies that are shot on anamorphic. It's such a unique way to tell the story and gives an interesting perspective. I've wanted to put together my own anamorphic rig for a long time and I finally did it. So I wanna show you guys the rig that I put together and some footage from it. And hopefully it'll be helpful to you as you put together your own Pocket 6K anamorphic rigs. Real anamorphic lenses are very expensive, especially the good ones. You can expect to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for a nice anamorphic set. But what a lot of people do to save money is they pair an anamorphic projector scope with a taking lens, and that gives you the anamorphic look for a lot cheaper. So the scope that I purchased was the Red Isco 2x Cinemascope. These run about $400 to $500. It has a 2 times stretch. It's a nice sharp projector scope and the flares aren't super extreme. They're nice and subtle. I thought this would do a great job for what I want it to do. So I bought a housing for my scope. I wanted everything to kind of feel like an all-in-one lens and be super protected. The housing that I purchased is by Rapido. It's called the Full Metal Jacket. And you can kind of see the scope rest inside this housing and then the V3 clamp attaches to the back, making it really easy to attach taking lenses to it. Um, I also bought a single focus solution because focusing both the scope and the taking lens is nearly impossible. It's just so much easier with a single focus solution. So I got the Rapido FVD 16. And basically this just screws onto the front of the full metal jacket and you just screw it in like this and it'll get there. It takes a little minute. And then once you have it locked in, basically what you can do is now you can focus the whole unit with just this single gear and it works with the follow focus and it does a really good job of focusing the scope and the taking lens at the same time. All you have to do is you set your taking lens to infinity and your scope to infinity and then the single focus solution does all the work for you. So I want to show you guys the rig that I built. It's a little bit different because I put it together with some spare parts and things that I had laying around. Um, let's start here with the base. This is actually the Ursa uh, mini base shoulder mount kit. And so you can see it's got the shoulder mount plate here. And then I have a Manfrotto uh, plate attached to it because I use a lot of Manfrotto tripods and monopods. And then it also has this little arm that comes up to it. And I've got this attached to my Feel World monitor. It's just a little small monitor, but it does have an anamorphic D-squeeze built into the monitor. So it makes it really nice for shooting anamorphic because I can kind of see everything that's in the shot. Um, right here at the back, I have the Watson V-mount 97 hour, and it gives me about eight hours to nine hours shooting. It's attached right here with a small rig V-mount plate that is attached to a rail block on the back here, so it kind of sits up, and it makes it really easy if I want to press it against my chest when I'm shooting to have steady footage. I've got the small rig cage on here with the handle. That makes everything really easy, and it's attached right here to the small rig base plate um, that attaches to the Ursa shoulder mount. I've got some 15 millimeter rods that run out right here and I've got a lens support attached to them. That's super helpful if you're running a heavier rig to just secure everything. And I have some handles here that I had from an older rig that I've attached. And then I've run some extra 15 millimeter rods coming out of the Ursa shoulder mount plate with a follow focus attached. Let me go ahead and screw this 85 Pentax in because that was the last one I used. So the housing should be set. I'm gonna go ahead and screw it in like that. And that's what's nice about the V3 clamp because it just makes that super easy. You can attach a step up filter to it if you'd like um, to try different lenses. So now I've got the taking lens in place and this is all good to go. Follow focus is working nice and smoothly. I will mention that I use with the V mount, I use these little uh, AC port cables that go right into the AC port of the pocket. I don't really like to run a dummy battery. Um, that's just a better setup for me. And then I also will say I bought the Tilta, the little mat box, uh, the mini one to just stick here on the front. And it's really easy, you just lock it down. And what I have in here is the black Pro Mist 1 4 4x4. And that gives a nice kind of just character to the image. So now I've got this ready to go. I've got the mat box with the flag up and I can just pick this up and I can use it like this up against my chest with the battery. Or I can throw it on my shoulder, making it really easy to use as a shoulder mount. Um, it's nice and easy to shoot. I've gotten really good footage with it so far that I've been really happy with. And um, I love the taking lens setup 
because if I change the taking lens, it changes the whole look of the scope. Um, so you can get a lot of variation, um, which is something you really wouldn't be able to do with uh, a traditional anamorphic lens that's set at one focal length. So one thing I want to mention is when you use this setup on a Super 35 or a full frame or even a Micro Four Thirds, sometimes you're limited on how wide you can take the taking lens without vignette. Um, each lens is different and basically you're trying to just minimize the distance between the sensor and the scope. Um, the more distance you have, the more likely it's going to vignette. So I've tried a lot of these lenses. 85 is fine with every lens that I've tried. Um, I don't have any vignette on the Biotar 58. I have seen some vignette on the 50 Pentax. There's a mode on the Pocket 6K that makes using wider lenses a little bit easier. Like when I use this Super Takamar 35 f2 and I put it in the 3.7 anamorphic mode on the Pocket 6K, the vignetting is pretty minimal. Um, most of the time I shoot this in full 6K anamorphic, um, the camera itself doesn't have a de-squeeze in it. So you have to have a monitor that has a de-squeeze to do that or it's really hard to frame. Uh, but I really like the, the actual resolution of the 6K anamorphic. It fits really nicely into a 2 to 4 to 1 uh, aspect ratio, which is common for cinema. So that's a nice fit for me. So let me recap this. I know we've kind of flown through this, but rig for anamorphic. I've got the pocket 6K with the small rig cage and the base plate and the handle. Um, it's attached to an Ursa shoulder mount kit with rails on the top connected to the small rig cage and rails on the bottom connected to the Ursa uh, shoulder mount plate. I've got a V-mount battery by Watson that's connected with the small rig V-mount plate connected to the rail block. And then I've got the tilt -a mat box with the Rapido FMJ V3 clamp and FBD16 for a full single focus solution and then whatever taking lens I want. Um, and then I've got a follow focus here. I didn't say what the follow focus is. Uh, the follow focus is made by Red Rock Micro. It's just one that I've had for a long time and that works really well. And then whatever handles you guys want to attach depending on how you want it to feel. But that's my anamorphic setup. Hopefully this has been helpful to you. And now I want to show you guys some footage from the various taking lenses that I've used. So I hope you enjoy. Mm -hmm. Oh 